Welcome to Tisserat Media Literacy, a new eight-part radio series that aims to educate and empower listeners to navigate the media landscape in a critical and informed way. In this session, we will explore the definition of media literacy and its importance in today's world. So what is the definition of media literacy? Media literacy is the ability to access, analyse, evaluate and create media in a critical way. It involves understanding how media is produced, distributed and consumed, as well as the different perspectives and biases that can be present in media. And what is the importance of media literacy? Media literacy is more important than ever in today's world. With the explosion of digital media and social media, we are constantly bombarded with information and it can be difficult to know what to trust. Media literacy enables us to sort through the noise and find credible information. It also empowers us to participate in the media landscape as informed and active citizens. And what is the importance of media literacy for older adults? We've all observed the harm caused by misinformation over the past number of years, particularly in relation to the COVID epidemic and within the political sphere. Research carried out throughout the 2016 US elections shows that older people were more likely to share misinformation. Of course, many older adults are not as familiar with social media as younger generations, so identifying what information is sponsored or targeted to manipulate can be difficult. Cognitive decline as we age also plays a part. All information has a source, but as we get older, with so much information in our heads, we forget where we heard or read the information we are sharing. Studies also show that as we age, the more often a piece of information is repeated, the more we are likely to believe it. And although the abundance of knowledge we've accumulated over our lives can help in evaluating information, older generations are generally more trustworthy of online social connections, increasing vulnerability to scams and hoaxes. That's not to say that we should become distrustful of all online information. The internet is an incredible source of information and vehicle for social interaction that is so important as we do age. It can be a lifesaver in so many practical ways, particularly for those living in isolation or impeded by mobility issues. For many, social media is a way of connecting with family and friends living abroad and an important part of social and community engagement. Our next episode will explore how media works and the different types of media that we encounter in our daily lives. We will also examine the role of media in society and the different perspectives and biases that can be present in media. So be sure to tune in for the second episode of Disara Media Literacy. Thank you for listening to Dizra Media Literacy. Remember to stay informed, stay curious and stay media literate. Yeah, and why media literacy training is so important for older adults. Um, I'm delighted to welcome here um, my three panel guests who will be here for this series. Um, we have Fiona Ash. Bill Tyson and Declan Cassidy. Um, we can start off maybe by each of you introducing yourself and just telling you why this subject is so important to each of you. Um, shall I go? <laughs> uh, so De Declan Cassidy, um, I, I came from a background of community media um, and that was back in the 80s in Ireland where um, I grew up in a particularly dodgy area <laughs> and um, we... we it's such a bashing from the media because we, the, you know, we had we had some problems with a, an expanding kind of community, and um, you know a lot of social, you know, repercussions of that. But there were so many brilliant things happening, and uh, they were never covered by the media. So I very early on 
you know, found the power of the media to dissuade people's opinion. And it got to the stage where um, we had to give the address of somebody who lived somewhere else if we were going for a job because our, our neighbourhood um, had such a bad reputation from the outside. So I've been very, very involved. Um, I got into community media at that point. Um, and for people like me, um, just what's been happening recently um, in, in terms of the explosion in social media and the amount of rubbish that's very convincing rubbish that's coming across. Um, it's kind of made me want to, to, to really do what I can, um, you know, to, 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 to try and solve that, I suppose, in whatever way. And Declan, your organisation is part of the Disrep programme. I might come back to you later to ask you to explain to our listeners a little bit about that project. Mm-hmm. Um, Bill, how about yourself? I'm a print journalist. Uh, I write a column for the Irish Mail on Sunday. I've been working in newspapers most of my life. Uh, I also have done a lot of documentaries and worked in the broadcast media. I'm a tutor with the Open College in journalism and I'm on the board of management of Dublin Community Television. So why I would be... I am passionately interested in what is happening in uh, with disinformation and in the information space. Uh, I've grew up um, admiring uh, or wanting to be uh, part of the the world of of journalism. And I remember uh, starting off and um, uh, being in a in a in a world that I that had a lot of respect from people at the time and uh, had to work to earn it. Uh, The uh, standards of what was uh, you know what information actually went into a newspaper. There was a gatekeeper role, uh, which um, has kind of gone by the board now. And there's uh, all hell is broken loose. It's one way of looking at it. I mean, there's also a lot of good information uh, that wasn't available to people before. And you might say that who's uh, you know why should anybody be a gatekeeper? We should all be uh, sort of citizen journalists. So what's going on is is fascinating and it's dangerous as well. And I know we're on a cusp of great change in humanity. And I, I think this is really part of it. Brilliant. I'm looking forward to hearing more throughout the series of your views. Um, Fiona, what about yourself? Well, I'm a filmmaker and a journalist. And um, when we were growing up, there was no social media. So, and, and a lot of the information to broadcast journalism, which I, I loved, was not necessarily based on foreign news. It was very Irish news. And I remember around 1984 when Band Aid, the, the single came out and the video came out based on a, a news report from Africa. It was one of the first times that I really got an insight into what was happening in other countries and the, the sense of injustice and poverty and people weren't as blessed as we were because the, up to then I hadn't really consumed a lot of foreign news in Ireland. So that really started a huge interest in foreign news and in and social justice for me. And so going into journalism and also film where I can cover social justice issues was very interesting. So I was a radio journalist for a long time and um, broadcasting news. So I would produce and present the news. I also worked in TV3, uh, which is a, a national news station. So I was uh, a producer there as well. And I was across the foreign news for a long time, which I really enjoyed. And I produced live news and live current affairs programmes. And there's nothing like being on air with live news, because if something breaks, you have to trust it. You have to trust whoever's giving it to you and you don't have a lot of time to check it. So that was always a, a huge risk, whereas most of the time, if something isn't breaking, you do have the time to go through the accuracy of it and where it comes from and get to sources and verify it. But it, I always found that very exciting, you know, so when something's breaking and how you deal with it. So uh, I worked in, in TV3 as well uh, for quite a while. And all the time I've also been doing filmmaking and I have particular interest in social justice filmmaking. So I've covered uh, a lot of uh, social justice issues and I continue to do that today, which is also a, a tremendous interest for me. Brilliant, brilliant. I actually remember that um, band-aid and it was remarkable, the impact it had, um, you know, across the world, you know. Um, so um, I find it interesting that um, why older adults we've in this in this session, we've done um, this. Uh, what we've done today um, there we see that older ad- adults are more likely to share misinformation. Um, did anything in that research that you heard um, resonate with you or surprise you? Well, it resonated with me personally. I, I mean, I'm aware of 
uh, older people. I mean, I'm in that category, <laughs> getting into that category myself now. But I mean, even older people than me <laughs> who um, uh, got uh, sort of into an, uh, a disinformation sphere and are very caught into it more than, say, younger people who might dip in and out and change their position. Like yeah. once they're, they're in, uh, like they, they take it more seriously. They take, they, uh, they have grown up with what, you know, what I mentioned before of, of news with newspapers and with a, uh, a broadcast media that was uh, very strict on what information was, was, was put out there. So they trust it. They've yeah. grown up trusting the information that they, that they got because it was distilled through, uh, you know, a process that had a tradition going that developed for hundreds of years of, of journalism to make this trustworthy. So they're more vulnerable because they're, they, they have learned to trust information, whereas maybe younger people learn not to trust it. Um, and But on the other side of the coin, you know, I think older people are wiser and they have more common sense as well. So there is, you know, there's two sides to the coin. Do you think maybe, um, you know, how um, when we're teaching people to look at, to be critical about what they're looking at and not to trust so easily that they might just end up not trusting at all, there's a danger that they, you know, they don't trust any information, the positive or, or the or the correct, the the true or the false. I absolutely, that's uh, that's going to be a great danger. I mean, it would break their heart because they're already the the um, people that I know have already gone down that rabbit hole, and you know, to that I think that's probably why they're, it's so hard to disabuse them of certain types of disinformation because you know their world then falls apart like yeah. if they, they, whereas maybe younger people are more um used to a fractured world when it comes to disinformation yeah yeah uh, i i think one of the one of the great difficulties is that um the the content creation has become so slick and so professional um and uh, I, I remember with my own parents showing them kind of the first mobile phone, which was like this massive big block, like a, a litre carton of milk. <laughs> um, and they, they couldn't they couldn't believe that you could hold this disconnected piece of machinery and make a phone call with it. Um, it was mind boggling for them. And um, I know now. Uh, when when you can when when with AI and with everything that's happening, it's just so slick and so credible um, that I think one of the you know as as was said earlier on, young people perhaps understand more what's achievable and are less wowed by it. But I think it's a huge hurdle to get across. Um, you know, when somebody sees something that looks and sounds and feels like the real thing, and then they're told that it's it's fake. You know, yeah. so I think it's the quality of the fake information is so high. The production values are so high. And uh, like like Fiona, um, uh, uh, you know, kind of we've, we've both been involved in film. Um, and I remember at the start of my career, and I imagine yours, you know, um, you'd agonise over how to get an, a, a special effect. And it was just way beyond the budget um, mm. and how you could do it with the click of a mouse. You know, you can... It's it's just gone so fin and so fast, and I think that's another problem is that um, people haven't had a chance to catch up with the latest development before it's old news and there's a new development, um, and it's 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 just staggering. And you talked about people just tuning out, perhaps. Um, yeah, I think that's a, a real danger. I think yeah. it's literally mind-boggling. Like I understand what that word means now more than ever. You know. And getting back to film, I mean, copyright is a big issue now in, in this digital world. And back in the days when we started, if somebody wanted a copy of our films, we had to go and hand them a celluloid copy of the film. So we knew we could contain who had it and, and who could control it. And now anybody can just lift it off YouTube or, or any site and take it and repurpose it as their own content. Yeah. So it's, it's a huge risk. It's funny. I I had an incident of that. I've I've just completed a, a short film where, um, I have six musicians who were were allowing me to use their music. So 
you know, a few years ago, I would have had to ask them to send me the original file um, because it's not it's not there accessible for anyone to copy. But they just all six of them presumed I could just <laughs> copy it off off the Internet. And I could, you know, um, and I had their permission to use it. Yeah. But th- there wasn't even a, oh, do you need the original file? You know, where, you know, so, so it's, yeah. Change, ch- rapidly changing times. And I think it's very, very important for people to stay connected, particularly older people, particularly if they're in rural areas where they're they're isolated from people. Things like WhatsApp or video calling really are great connections yes. for people. And we learned that a lot through the pandemic where people weren't allowed to leave their houses and suddenly they didn't have that day to day communication with people. But the danger is, particularly with social networks, is that there's a lot of um, spam accounts imitating people. So they imitate your friends and your family. So you get this connection request from somebody that you know very well. And it's their picture and it's their description. And it's harder for older people to realise that that is a spam account, that that is not their friend and, and that there's risks in connecting with this person who's imitating their family or friend. Yeah, I've I've been... Um bombarded with lots of those. So, you know, and it it, it does, it is, um, you know, worrying, you know, how many people who wouldn't know that this is a, that this is fake, you know. Yeah, because, you know, getting back to how quickly things have changed, I think most of us would be familiar with those badly worded um, appeals from a foreign nation saying, you know, uh, somebody has died and if you uh, or I've been involved in a this or whatever and if you send me some money into the account uh, you know I think they were so transparent and so clumsy just a couple of years ago mm-hmm. that you know people laughed at them they've become so slick you know I'm, I'm for some reason I'm very attractive to um, American military type men <laughs> with very strange profiles but I, I just seem to get loads of these um, requests friends requests and I know that when you click into them you know you know it's leading you into some kind of scam you know um, Declan can you tell us a bit about the Disarray project yeah so the Disarray project um, it, it involves um, C- Sicily um, as the main organising organisation in New Horizons there um, and what they looked at are um, across Europe you have rural communities with elderly people and um, they're used to as was said more traditional media and radio would have been um, you know where they get a lot of their information and news from so um, a lot of the conversation that's taking place in a digital space is passing them by um, so the Disarab project was to to look at this whole area and to try and make it accessible to those people who are still um, trusting and and uh, getting their information from um, audio and radio uh, which is why we're here today Fantastic um, Well I think that's the end of today's discussion And I look forward to discussing this more in our next episodes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.